Good. I think then we are ready to start. If you agree, Rob. Yes. So welcome everybody and good afternoon. Um, it's great to have you here in the webinar for Meet Max. We're happy to present to you the new master certificate in managing climate solutions. My name is Merla Kubli. I'm the program manager for the certificate and I'm probably the person you contact the first if you have any questions on the certificate. With me today is uh, Wolf Wiestenhagen. He's the academic director of the certificate. Thank you, Mela, and good afternoon, every, everyone, also from my end. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here and look forward to discussing with you uh, in the next hour or so. So the program for today um, is, if you move on to the next slide, maybe, Rolf, thank you. So we'll introduce you to the Master Certificate in Managing Climate Solution and start with why you actually should study that Master Certificate and take on the extra effort um, beyond your regular master degree at the University of St. Gallen. So with this, we also explain you what is actually the certificate program and discuss you with you right away what is the structure of the MAX um, master certificate. We will here discuss the core um, courses as well as the elective courses of the MAX certificate and then move on what your career opportunities will be once you completed the MAX certificate. And then as the last step, we talk about the very um, concrete aspects like how to apply um, for the MAC certificate and which documents are needed to, to apply. We will then um, open the room for your questions and you can start in um, sending uh, your questions right away if you move your cursor towards the bottom of the screen. And then you will see um, a button called Q&A or F&A if you're using the German version where you can type in your questions already now. So once the presentation is finished, we'll then answer your questions. And if we should not have enough time to answer them all, we'll send you the answer by email. Then we'll move on um, to what you're probably all curious about. Um, we'll tell you the solutions about the climate solutions quiz, which is probably the way you've learned about that webinar. And also we'll draw the, the lucky winner of the quiz. About um, at 5.30, we'll come towards the end of the webinar. Now I would like to hand over to Rolf Wüstenhagen, who will tell you why you should um, participate in the Master Certificate Managing Climate Solutions. Thank you, Mela. I'll be happy to do that in just a second. But uh, before we forget, maybe we should briefly introduce ourselves. Um, so my name is Rolf Wüstenhagen. I'm a professor for management of renewable energies here at the University of St. Gallen. Um, I've been teaching climate-related courses uh, for quite some time at the University of St. Gallen. Um, I was originally trained in industrial engineering and management, so a bit of engineering, but mostly management. Um, have uh, worked in venture capital for a period of time before kind of returning to my academic career. Um, have uh, been co-authoring one of the IPCC reports, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Um, and also been advising the Swiss government. So I've been kind of working in different areas related uh, to this uh, particular topic. Mela, you want to say a few words about yourself? Sure. So my name is Mela Kubli, as you already heard. I'm a postdoc researcher at the Institute for Economy and the Environment um, in the chair of Rolf Wüstenhagen. And I have a background in economics, business administration, as well as system dynamics. Um, and my research brought me to investigating how renewables diffuse in, in regions or in energy systems and which new business models emerge um, that facilitate that transition. And in this respect, I'm particularly interested in solar power as well as electric mobility and how we combine both of them. Um, I worked with a lot of um, projects together with electric utility companies and through that also had the opportunity really had um, some practical insights into the energy industry. Thank you, Mela. So as you can already see, um, the people behind this program are passionate about the issue um, and also kind of put an emphasis on making the connection between the insights. Um, the scientific insights on all these topics, but also their practical implementation. That's really what um, we try to also bring into this program. So as Mela said, uh, let me tell you a few things about why this particular program and then how we've been structuring it. Um, 
for all of you who are here today, it's probably no surprise that uh, climate change is a, is a very important issue. Um, and it is an issue that is both a risk and an opportunity for business as well. And what we've listed here is a couple of quotes from um, high profile people who, who said that in, in different ways. Um, Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General said, climate disruption is happening now and it is happening to all of us. Um, Simonetta Samoroga, the current president of the Swiss Confederation, um, says Switzerland is particularly affected and therefore the federal government has set their aim for net zero emissions by 2050. You see Mark Carney, who until uh, a few months ago was the governor of the Bank of England, is now a special envoy of the United Nations on climate finance. Um, and he says companies that fail to respond to climate change will go bankrupt. And Alison Martin, who's the CEO uh, for Europe, Middle East and Africa for Zurich Insurance, says climate change is a trillion dollar risk and an opportunity. So it's a big topic, it's an important topic for society, but it is also a topic that's particularly relevant for people studying at a business school or in one of the programs of the University of Sankara. It is also something um, you see in all these pictures that you see here on the left um, that's really created a strong social movement. In the last 18 months or so, um, we've seen uh, climate strikes all around the world, uh, young people taking it to the streets, uh, asking for uh, urgent issues to really address this important crisis. And the University of St. Gallen has kind of seen this happening um, and has kind of thought about, well, what can we do to, uh, to help? Um, so the rectorate and um, last uh, year has signed um, the so-called SDG Accord, that's the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and one of the, uh, the kind of commitments that the university has made is to kind of in strengthen their research and teaching in the area of climate change. And that's where this particular program also comes in. Now you may ask yourself, what is a certificate program? Um, the idea of this program uh, is that it's an additional qualification um, that you would do on top of your normal uh, master's degree. Um, in this case, it's 24 ECTS. Um, and there is a number of such certificates, both on bachelor and master level. Um, maybe you've heard about the data science fundamentals uh, certificate on bachelor level. There's a certificate in business education and one in business journalism. And now this new one here um, is about managing climate solutions. We've put it together um, in a team of people um, at our institute, but also working with an interdisciplinary advisory board. Um, let me just briefly mention the people who um, are not, uh, have not talked here so far. Um, so on top of uh, Mela, who's the program manager, um, there is Nina Schneider, who uh, was helping in, in concept development and has really kind of worked uh, towards kind of bringing these different dots together um, in, in shaping this program. There's Alex Sander Stauch and Julia Borza, who are also here in the call today, who are part of our market team, marketing team. And then we have this interdisciplinary advisory board, which is really remarkable because it spans several different schools of the University of St. Gallen, ranging from management to the School of Finance to economics and political science, social science, law, and we have, even have a climate scientist, uh, Professor Sonja Senevri-Reutner from uh, ETH Zurich, who uh, is also a member of that advisory board, which I think already shows you that like, there's really passionate people about this topic in, in different parts of the university. And it's really uh, insightful to have these different insights come together and, and shape the curriculum of our program. The program structure uh, is as follows. So there are actually two core courses. One is the Climate Solutions 101 course, and I'll go into more detail about what that means in just a second. Um, that will be offered in the fall semester. Um, and then there is a second core course, one semester later, um, which has a bit of a bulky name. It's called Multidisciplinary Perspectives on Climate Solutions. Um, but what it really is about is about implementing a practical solution um, either on campus or in the region um, towards climate change. These are the two core courses. So these are the two courses that you would do actually in addition to your normal master's program. And then there is a, a, a range of electives um, that we've kind of grouped together in three pillars, one called climate sustainability, one called energy transition and governance, and the third one called low carbon innovation. And that is a menu of courses that are existing courses at the University of St. Gallen that we've kind of put together 
um, where you would study with kind of core students from the different programs um, and by that kind of get uh, a, a dedicated kind of package of, of insights um, related to uh, climate solutions. And then once you've collected your 16 ECTS on the electives part and the other eight in the two core courses, um, then you get this kind of certificate and uh, have this additional qualification on top of your normal master's degree. A few more words about these uh, courses as well as the electives. So um, for the first core course, the Climate Solutions 101, that's going to be offered in the fall term. It, is, um, it has five ECTS. Um, it consists of an introductory phase where we'll, we will do a physical kickoff meeting at the 12th of September. Um, followed then by a number of um, online learning modules and quizzes um, so that you can gradually kind of start getting into the topic um, and actually also get insights in climate science, economics, policy um, and implications for business. Then at the heart of it is a block week uh, in the second week of the semester break. So this year it's going to be November 2nd to 6th on, um, um, here on, on campus where we will have different people also from the advisory board coming in, um, providing lectures. Uh, we will do team exercises. We will have an excursion there. Um, so really an intense camp um, for you to kind of uh, delve deep into uh, the, the topic, but also get to know each other um, and interact with, with the kind of visiting um, lecturers who, who will come and, and share their insights with you. Um, a special idea here is also uh, team teaching. So for example, um, you saw on the advisory board my colleague Angelo Ronaldo from the School of Finance. Um, and the idea is for people like him who are kind of really experts on, on systemic risk in financial markets to team up with people who come more from a climate background and then kind of really see how these climate issues can be, can be related to uh, the, the mainstream topics that are being discussed in, in his discipline. And we will try to do that and match people together um, with different backgrounds um, to, to really kind of make that kind of team teaching happening between core faculty and climate specialists. After the intensive block week, um, there's a reflection phase and that ends with a learning reflection paper and the physical closing session um, at the beginning of December. Then the next step in your program is the electives. As we said, it's 16 ECTS uh, in these three pillars. Um, this is, uh, as I said, kind of we're, we're offering you here a menu of different courses and we've put together for you a preliminary overview of uh, the courses that you can choose from. One thing to be kept in mind here is that um, if you kind of design a program like this, it's one of the interesting challenges is to to forecast what will be offered next year. Um, that's, not, that's sort of non-trivial when you, when you design a program like this for the first time. So um, we'll show you the, the menu of courses, but um, be aware that there might be kind of one or two courses that, that change until the time um, that you can then actually choose those courses. Um, if, for those of you who are already studying at the University of Sangan, you might be familiar with this, that um, you have to choose those courses through the bidding system and the bidding would then usually open towards kind of late August um, to, um, and so by then we will have the final menu of, of courses ready for you. That said, with that little disclaimer, um, here is the, the list of courses. Um, so we'll, you see that in each of those uh, columns, there are about six to seven courses that you can choose from um, to kind of collect your, uh, your 16 ECTS in total. Um, the idea would be that you pick one course from each column, at least one course from each column, um, and um, so that you get a, a, a good kind of diversified portfolio of those different insights in climate and sustainability, energy transition and governance, and low carbon innovation. The courses listed here are a mix of uh, courses that are um, in the kind of core uh, programs like management, like economics, um, um, but also a, a set of courses that are from the contextual studies program. Um, and you will be able to kind of get credited for this also to your main master's program in either the main program or the contextual studies program, depending on where the course is affiliated. I guess I won't go through all of the individual courses right now. Um, we can always come back to that if you have questions later on. And then finally, the second core course is the, this thing called Multidisciplinary Perspectives on Climate Solutions. It's be, going to be offered in the spring term. 
three CTS. And the idea is really a practical implementation of one particular climate solution, either on campus or in the region. So we will do a kickoff with a partner from either industry or public sector. Um, we have had contacts and projects with some of those partners in the past. Um, for example, the municipal utility, utility of St. Gallen, or the St. Gallen Stadtwerke, as they're called, or there is an initi initiative uh, in the rural part of the canton of St. Gallen called Energietal Tokenburg, um, or also a project on campus, um, as in, for example, the idea of putting solar panels on some of the university buildings. And then um, after this kickoff and the kind of description of the, the challenge by the, the industry or public sector partner, student teams will work on actually kind of finding a solution to this. And the idea is really to implement as much as possible uh, this solution already within the, the project. Uh, but there is of course also an opportunity to kind of continue that after the course. There might be spin-offs. Um, maybe once you've kind of solarized the university roof in St. Gallen, you can also of course kind of continue with that idea um, in, in other places. So those are the three components of the curriculum. The, first core course uh, in the fall semester, then the set of electives that you can do uh, during the course of your studies, um, and then finally the second core course in the, in the spring semester. Last but not least, what can you do after you graduate from the program? Um, well, of course it's a new program, so um, we can kind of extrapolate from what people who have studied uh, at the University of St. Gallen, also taken courses with me, um, have done in the past. Um, we will also, we will show you at the very end of today's webinar, um, a link to a new video that we've produced that includes some people um, like the two I've shown here, um, who are talking about kind of their experience of, of uh, where this could lead. Um, as we see it, there is a whole range of, of opportunities. You can either kind of go to the private sector, work in any of the core functions, uh, business, marketing, business development, for example, um, finance. Uh, or risk management. Um, many companies nowadays are faced with this issue of climate change um, and they're looking for people who help them kind of uh, understand the issue and, and come to solutions. There's also demand from the public sector, um, can range from local to national governments to any of the international organizations. Um, people in the, uh, might kind of uh, take a career to the European Commission, the United Nations agencies, um, etc. NGOs is another option. Um, obviously there is small and large NGOs, um, some of them very kind of international, like for example, the WWF, who are also kind of looking for people, helping them um, implementing and communicating climate solutions. Um, we think that there is certainly also an opportunity to start your own business. Uh, Christoph Birkholz, who's one of the alumni from our chair, um, has, for example, started Impact Hub Switzerland. Um, so there is a whole range of, of options to, to start your own business uh, in this particular area. And last but not least, um, maybe some of you might also kind of see that as a starting point to pursuing an, an academic career um, in, in this area. So this is sort of a quick overview of what the program is about and where it can lead you. I think with that, I'll hand it over back to Mela to tell you a little more about um, how can you actually apply for it, and then we will come to your questions. So if you're now motivated to do the MAC certificate, um, you probably wonder how to apply for the program. And this is actually pretty simple. You can go to our webpage, which is max.unisg.ch. And then there are actually several bot buttons where you can click apply now. So just click there, basically. It's as simple as this. You will come to a forum where you have to enter your, your name, address, and so on, the, the master program that you're intending to, to study if you're not already studying in the master program. And then the, you will be asked to submit three documents. And these documents are your CV, where you describe what you've done in your life so far, which school you've visited, what if you had some jobs um, and experiences perhaps with climate solutions already as well as a motivation letter where you describe why you would like to take part in the Managing Climate Solutions Master Certificate. Um, this should be maximum two pages, so one to two pages, where you just, as I said, describe your motivation. Then as a third piece, we ask you to submit a great transcript um, yeah, for our information too. And don't worry, the grades are the most important decision criteria. We're also mostly interested in students who are really 
motivated to take climate solutions forward um, to, to really like be part of a solution here. Important to notice, um, there is an application deadline on the 30th of June 2020, where you have to submit um, the, your application. The, your application is basically embedded in a timeline, so you should be either already a current master student at University of St. Gallen, or maybe you are a future master student at University of St. Gallen. In this case, you have probably have um, submitted your application for the master program already on the 30th, 31st of March or the 30th of April. Those two deadlines um, exist for the master programs at University of St. Gallen. Then you have time until the 30th of June to submit your um, application for the MAX program. You will hear from us until the end of July, but you're admit, admitted to MAX certificate. And then, um, as already mentioned by Wolf, we have the kickoff day for the first um, core course on the 12th of September. From then on, we're um, all studying managing climate solutions. Yeah. So much from our side, a very short presentation of what the Master Certificate in Managing Climate Solutions is. I'm sure you now have um, questions on, on this presentation as well as the certificate itself. So as I mentioned before, you can type in your questions into the Q&A um, button below in your screen, respectively Fragen and Antworten, and we'll answer them now. And I see there were already some first um, questions and we probably just start from the very top um, answering as good as we can. So there is one question I will um, ask you to roll if you can answer. <laughs> um, someone asking as I will be on exchange next semester from October will it be possible to complete the first um, five ECTS in full from abroad by attending the sessions online? Yes, thank you, Valeria, for that question. Um, that's an interesting one. Um, so the, when we designed the program, we were kind of assuming that uh, life would happen on, uh, on campus. Um, as you know, in this semester, this is not the case. So um, we, we're hoping that kind of uh, the kind of university will, will go back to normal, in which case uh, we will have this as a face-to-face as a, um, -face course. Then the main idea would really be to do it on campus, um, especially the week uh, long kind of block seminar. As you see, I mean, there is kind of this week uh, long intensive seminar. There's one kind of kickoff day at the beginning of the semester, and then there's one kind of session um, at the end of the semester. Um, so for those, it would be desirable that you would actually be there um, to also be able to interact um, with the other students uh, in the group. I think the second question basically tackles on the same issue. Can we pursue the certificate while building on um, semester leave? Um, so I'll jump over that since that seems to be answered by um, this already. Then there's the next question um, by Stephanie Riekum. Um, can the eight core courses be angerechnet to the master or will they be additional? So if they can be accredited. Yes, maybe for this we go back to the Ah, sorry, the eight core courses. What do you mean by the eight core courses? Um, the eight ECTS from the core courses. Yes, the they would be different. So that, right, maybe we go back to the, to this one here. So the two, the core, the two core courses, as far as I understand, I'm, I'm still also on the learning curve in terms of all this kind of accreditation within the university, but as far as I understand, um, the two core courses will be additional. Whereas the electives, to a large extent can then be accredited to your main program or to the contextual studies program. Yeah. That's also my understanding. And then the next question also from the same person, um, and what kind of examination is the first core? Yes, so the, for the Climate Solutions 101, um, the, we are still kind of finalizing the, the design, so great to, to have those questions now. Um, what we are anticipating is basically three grading elements. One would be quizzes for this kind of online period in the first part um, of the uh, semester. Then there will be a team assignment during the, the block uh, week. Um, and then there will be the reflection paper, which will also be part of the grade. So it's going to be these three uh, components that then will together kind of 
form the, the, the grid for the, the first, for the climate solutions one. Good. There is a, another question which I actually just received twice, so one from Livia Gensch as well as from Johanna Bengtsson. Um, how many people will be admitted to pr the program? How will, big will the group be? Yes, so um, of course we're kind of very curious to see how many applications we will have. Um, what we told the university for planning the whole thing uh, was would, that we would limit it to 30 spots, so that it would be a rather kind of dedicated group. Um, we might be kind of adjusting that slightly depending on the number of applications, but that's sort of the order of magnitude we're, we're shooting for. And mm -hmm. um, then maybe one question I answer by uh, way myself. Um, I understood that high scale master alumni are also allowed to apply. Can you please confirm? Um, since we had already an email conversation on that, the current status of, of whom we're allowed to admit to the program is indeed that it's um, current um, University of St. Gallen master students as well as alumni. Um, so that should be the case that alumni can be admitted to the program, but we have to wait for a very final approval from the university in this respect. But so please send your application. We hope it, it will work. And in yeah. general, we've been discussing this uh, a couple of times with people in the university. Um, the main focus of the program is really to, to kind of do it in parallel to your normal master's program. Um, as an exception from the rule, you might kind of do it in another, another stage of life, but it's not an executive education program. It's not something that um, you should do 10 years after graduating, but the main uh, idea is really to do it in parallel uh, with your master's program. But as Mela said, um, there might be exceptions from the rule, maybe also kind of to, to increase a bit the diversity of the group, but our main focus is master students. So there is another concrete question from Laura neufeld Um If I already took two courses last autumn in um, the pillar climate, um, climate and sustainability, I mean concrete, it's the corporate sustainability management as well as negotiation, the Amazon um, course. Is it possible to accredit both courses, in particular for master students who already started their master degree last autumn? That's a very good question. Um, as far as I understood, if it's exactly the same course, uh, there is a chance to get it accredited. But Mela, maybe you know more about it? No, actually, I don't know more yet about it. So that's probably a question we have to take um, back home with us to, <laughs> to double check what the exact rules are. My intuition would be that if it's the very same course that it can be accredited, but I really would have to double check to be, to be sure on this. Yeah. So we can send you a response by email to, to be very sure. Good. Mm -hmm. Omar asked the same question about how many spots. As I said before, we are looking at 30 spots for the first uh, iteration of it. Elsa asked about how much time do we have to complete the certificate? Mela, how much time? So in the current regulation, um, you have um, six years basically um, for as long as you are allowed to do um, the, the certificate after finishing your master's degree. So that's a pretty long time. <laughs> um, I hope you agree that this is the, the correct um, regulation to cite here. I am not entirely sure. Um, I guess the suggestion that we would have is to do it in two semesters, but you can, I don't think there's a, there's a tight time limit to, to kind of potentially also stretch it out over a longer period of time. Yeah, the regular way would certainly be one year, but I think there is uh, room for it to extend it to quite a bit. And then the same question again uh, that we already addressed in terms of can these uh, two core courses be accredited? Uh, they are accredited to the certificate, but usually not to the other um, master programs. So these two courses are in addition. That's the eight ECTS that you would have to do in addition to your normal master's program. Stephanie says, sorry, me again. Um, may I ask whether it is possible to spread the 16 ECTS over different semesters? Absolutely. Okay. Go ahead. 
Mela? So the, the elective courses, you're basically free to choose whenever you want to take them. So you can take them all in a, a fall semester, all in a spring semester. You can spread them over a year. You can even spread it over two or maybe three years if you are planning to have a bit of extended study time for your master. So you're very flexible in this respect. What is important that you really start with taking the first core course, so the Climate Solutions 101 as your first, or should be the first course, and then after that, you're quite flexible. Yeah. Then Alyssa asks whether uh, she can apply if already enrolled in a master's program at the University of St. Gallen. The short answer is yes, please do. <laughs> so it's really open for those already enrolled in a master program. Um, and yeah, the only thing is that I have to double check with if you potentially um, already completed some courses that are part of the um, certificate of the elective courses to if you can double count them already. But you're definitely eligible to apply. Very good. Um, Patrick asks what the language is, German or English? So it's an all English program. But it's no problem if you're part of a German main master program, but all courses in the certificate will be taught in English. Also, if you have a group project or so, this has to be written in English, same as for the reflection paper for the first core course. Exactly. Very good. And then Celia, Celia asks about, um, are there any master's programs which do not fit the max would you where you would not recommend doing the max <laughs> so maybe i can try to answer that in general the the max certificate is really designed that it can be completed um with all masters it depends a bit um on the master program how many courses you can double accredit so in which you also can count for your main uh, master degree um, if you happen to be part of the SIM master degree, since that's a quite structured program, you also have to be careful to really manage your, your workload in that respect. Um, there we're in discussion with the program management from the SIM uh, master, but even there, there should be a way to complete it. It might be that it's more reasonable there that you first complete the first year of the SIM master and then start the MAC certificate to not have too many courses all at once. Yes, but in general, as you said, we're open to students from all the different programs. Um, there seems to be, when we looked at the electives, there seems to be a little bit more overlap with some programs than others. Um, but I mean, both can make sense. And in, in one way, maybe you would have even more complementary content here. Um, in another way, you can, might have more synergies. Um, so we're actually open to people from, from all different master's programs. Then Roger asks whether he has to be enrolled as a student uh, because he's finishing now and would like to do the next next year. So you will have to be enrolled as a student, um, but you, it's possible to just take the courses of the MAC certificate, um, but it will force you to pay the regular um, master's um, semester fees. Exactly. Then Lorena asks about the block week in November crossing with other courses and schedule conflicts. Um, schedule conflicts happen. Um, unfortunately, uh, they're not always uh, possible to resolve. Um, maybe if you already know what kind of course it is in your case, you might want to reach out to us to, so that we can see whether there is a way of sometimes talking to another lecturer um, to see whether there's a workaround. In general, the idea would be to attend the full week if at all possible because it's also, I mean, there's a lot of content, but it's also team building, kind of um, group building. Um, so if at all possible, we would recommend um, to attend the full week. Then Alisa has a question that I think we've addressed before um, in terms of accrediting courses from electives that you've taken in the past semesters. We think it's possible, we will have to kind of double check um, whether there's any restrictions to that. Maybe I can um, pick out another question which came through the chat um, for him. Uh, another question about the exchange. Is it possible to start a program next fall and go on an exchange next spring semester? Or, um, or do we have to complete all courses in a limited time frame? 
in general, it's possible to extend it over a longer period of time. So if you um, are on exchange on, in the next spring semester, then you can take the missing course, which is especially the second core course at a later point in time, but probably then it would only be possible a year later because the first core course is only offered in this fall and the second core course is only offered in the spring. Then again, some people asking about how many students are going to be admitted. Uh, as I said earlier, we're currently looking for 30 spots. Um, and depending on the demand, we might kind of slightly increase that, but that's kind of the, the target group uh, that, we're, that, we're having, that we're looking for. And someone asking, is it possible to combine this certificate with the VPAT? The VPAT, that's the Richards Pedagogische Lehrgang or um, business education, business whatever it's called in English, business teaching, business innovation, business education. Um, in general, yes, it's, uh, it's just more work. Um, so, but I mean, there's no reason not to do two certificates. You take your time to do so. Yeah. And the similar question, is it um, possible to apply for both the Max and the SEMS? You can always apply, of course. Um, the, when we kind of thought about who would be the most natural uh, target audiences, we were kind of thinking that maybe the SEMS program has already some uh, content in that direction, but um, in principle, it's possible to do it from all uh, master's programs. And then a question we already addressed, do we have to complete all courses in one year? So no, you don't have to complete all courses in one year. It's just important that once you apply that you then take the core course one, so Climate Solutions 101 in the um, first fall semester. Um, and ideally you can take the, the second core course in the sp following spring semester, but you're free to schedule the elective courses um, according to your needs, basically. And Romain asks whether a student who is not accepted this year can reapply next year. And yes, that's possible. Okay. And I have to read a bit further. Uh, there is a follow-up um, relating to my questions about semester leave. I aim at finishing my master next semester. Hence, in the spring semester 2021, I'll be done with exams and only the thesis left. In order to take the certificate, will I have to be enrolled as a regular student and pay the full amount of two tuition fees? Unfortunately, yes. There's nothing we can do about it. If you want to take courses, we have to pay the full tuition fees. Not our choice, but that's how the rules are in the university. And Matteo is asking, how is the accrediting concerning law masters, law and law economics, for instance? So um, there is a bit less overlap with the law master, but there's still quite a couple of courses that count for several master programs, as well as the law masters and law economics, as well as we include several courses from the contextual studies program. So there will be still the option for you to um, double accredit um, quite a couple of courses. But in the end, you have to really double check with the exact elected, elective um, courses that you really pick. But we are um, quite confident that it will be attra attractive for all master programs to, to do the certificate. That's right. And as we discussed earlier, there's um, probably some programs which have more overlap than others. Um, so for law, law and economics, we would probably see this as one of those where there's not so much overlap so far. Um, in that sense, I mean, it can still be useful, but it, then it's, it's, a, it's a complementary program. Uh, which might mean you may have to, to do a couple of credits extra um, in this case, compared to where in other programs you will have more synergies. Patrick asks whether he can do all the electives in one semester. So yes, it's possible to do like 16 credit points um, for, for all the electives you need to have for the max certificate. Um, what you have to keep in mind that you really take one elective per pillar each, but if you really have uh, sufficient capabilities to do that um, in one semester, that's possible to do. Just to keep your, your main master program in mind too, <laughs> but maybe that's already completed. 
Then Alisa wants to know if she graduates before she finishes the certificate. Do you need, does she need to wait until she finishes the certificate to receive the master's degree? Wow, that's an interesting one. <laughs> so my take would be that since you completed all um, requirements for the regular master's degree, that you're actually eligible to, to receive the master's degree. Um, since you haven't finished everything for the max certificate yet, you will just receive the regular master degree and then receive the max certificate at a later point in time once you completed all requirements for that. That would be my take too, but you might want to double check with some legal person. But I think in general, that's the idea of an additional certificate because it's additional. It doesn't make your other master's degree dependent on it, but it, um, so once you've completed the master, you have it. Um, and once you've completed the certificate, you get that on time. Yang Feng is asking, um, would it be possible to accredit courses in the exchange semester that are similar to the elective courses offered at high scale relating to the max, um, to the curriculum? That's also a very good question. Um, this, there is a procedure for that. We are not 100% familiar with how this procedure will go. Um, in general, we would then ask you to um, share the curriculum of the course that you, uh, or the, the kind of outline of the course that you're trying, that you're intending to do at uh, the other university. Um, and when you share that, we can take a look whether there is kind of overlap with any of the things offered here. Um, and then a decision will be taken whether or not this is possible to, to accredit that course. Mm -hmm. Our colleague Alex poses interesting questions, probably interesting for others too. Um, how does the final certificate look like? Will it be part of the official high scale master degree? Is there an average grade for the certificate displayed? <laughs> Very interesting question. Uh, we will have to check that. Um, I don't know yet. Okay, we have three more to go um, before we then maybe can go to the quizzes. Roger asks a follow-up question. Um, he will uh, extend his semesters in at the end of 2020 and then he would be um, half enrolled, half alumni. Oh, that's an interesting case. Um, so we'll try to take that account when, when clarifying how the alumni option works. Thank you for spelling that out. Then Pedro asks about the bidding for the electives. Um, will the enrolled students have priority for the chosen Peter electives or the gen do the general bidding rules apply? Amanda, do you know? Um, so, do we know that already in detail? Um, so, I'm actually not sure on that point yet. If we're, I think that's not fully decided yet if you're um, bidding like at the same time for Max and for the main program or if that's one after another, or am I forgetting something? No, I think you're right. There is a meeting uh, of the Dean's Advisory Office tomorrow where I think this could be one of the questions that are being discussed. Um, the, the, it could go one way or the other, um, depending on whether you, whether kind of Max will be kind of a separate uh, kind of channel on, on, in the bidding system or whether you will bid from your main master's program. We'll still have to figure that out. So we don't know yet exactly. And then the last question from Chloe. Do some courses include workshops with companies working in their space or practical examples? Um, I'm not exactly sure whether I understand the correction. The, the question correctly, is it like, you mean working in space as in like space, uh, like yes. My take would be in their offices. So I assume what we can tell in this question in this um, second core course, um, we do plan to have a concrete application project where students work in groups, um, where we foresee that we'll be um, in collaboration with um, corporate partners or public partners where you really implement the concrete climate solution, um, which could be either at the university or for some um, companies in the region, where you really um, work towards implementing a, a climate solution. Whether you'll be in their concrete offices depends on where you schedule your meetings, but you will be really working on a very concrete case. 
Yeah, so now clarified, you meant not aerospace, but working in this space as in like in climate change. And yes, we're intending to have collaboration with companies in, in this sector and to do um, to work to work with them on, on their specific challenges as well. Very good. That uh, were a lot of questions. Um, thank you. Um, we hope we could answer most of them and we'll take uh, note of those where maybe we haven't been able to kind of find the complete uh, answer. Um, just now. Then I suggest what we do is we go to the next part uh, and um, sort of the fun part um, of, of this webinar today. Um, as Mela had mentioned today, uh, before we had uh, the little quiz um, out there uh, where we had asked a couple of questions. Um, so we just wanted to kind of share with you the, the answers to those questions um, and then in the end um, also who the lucky winners are um, of the three uh, vouchers um, for kind of Tibet's uh, vegetarian food. So the first question here was what do WHO, the World Health Organization and the Paris Agreement have in common? Um, and we had a couple of options there and the White House doesn't like them. Their work is science-based, that so they are global institutions to solve global problems and Switzerland participates in both of them. In fact, the correct answer is any of them. Um, those are all true. Um, the Paris Agreement for Climate Change um, is something that's been kind of agreed upon by all the countries in the world, except that the United States, the current president of the United States has said that he, uh, he would leave the Paris Agreement as of um, next year. And um, also the um, World Health Organization has heard similar um, views from the White House. They are both science-based. Um, they are global institutions to solve global problems and Switzerland participates in both of them. Um, all correct answers. And as you can see, the answers were also quite evenly split, uh, uh, spread across the different uh, options. So you all scored well here. Then a second question was, in your view, what is the best way to make uh, high speed climate neutral by 2030? Um, solar panels on every building, uh, replacing oil heating systems with heat pumps, tofu in the kitchen every day, or a free e-bike e for every assessment. Again, um, all possibilities, no wrong or right answer here in this particular question. Um, it was interesting for us to see what people answered. Um, many people say replacing oil heatings with heat pumps would be a good idea. Almost the same um, share of people say solar panels on the roof of every building would be a great idea. Um, a little less uh, people for tofu in the canteen every day. And interestingly, very few who think a free e bag for every assessment. I don't know whether that's because you already are past the assessment level and don't want uh, the others to benefit or whether they think this is maybe too expensive. But in fact, mobility is also, uh, transport is also one of the areas um, that have a lot of carbon emissions. Then there was this interesting question about what is the carbon bubble, um, a new chewing gum, a carbon fiber drone that could revolutionize urban passenger transport, a risk to the stability of global financial markets or a bunch of climate alarmists who cancel their FT subscription and only read the WWF magazine. Well, obviously 80% here um, captured the right answer. It is indeed, um, the, the carbon bubble is indeed the idea that um, there might be an, an overvaluation of assets in financial markets, um, not taking into account, not properly taking into account climate risk. And um, similar to the housing bubble a few years ago, there might be this risk um, that um, there could be a deflation of that bubble um, if governments start really kind of pricing carbon the right way. Um, not too many people thought it would be a chewing gum and um, a few people thought it could be a carbon fiber drone that could revolutionize urban transport. I mean, that would also be nice, but this is not what the carbon bubble actually is about. Then there was a question, how many years can the world continue with last year's CO2 emissions until we reach the two degree target? Is it 10 years, 23 years, 50 years, or is it too late anyway? The correct answer is in fact, not this one. <laughs> That's uh, the correct answer is 23 years with the uh, current um, with the current uh, emissions. Um, so, um, in fact, what we see here is that um, we currently emit about 33 gigatons of CO2 from um, from from the energy sector, mostly um, from burning fossil fuels. And if we keep doing this, um, we will have reached a two-degree target in about 23 years. 
Um, so we could either go on emitting as much as we do now and then kind of stop abruptly in 2043, or maybe that's a better idea, we could start reducing emissions um, in the very near term. What is the share of air travel in Switzerland's CO2 emissions? Um, different range of options. Mela, what do you know? Well, according to what I know, there are a bit of different answers according to different studies, but it varies a bit between 12 and 17 percent, what the studies say. Yes, so there is indeed different answers. Uh, one to two percent is what you often hear, but that's the global average. Um, two to three percent is what it is in Europe. Um, and for Switzerland, um, the government recently has kind of made a, given a response to a member of parliament who asked that question and said it's 12 percent. Climate scientists say this is an underestimation and they think it's, it's more close to 19%. So in any case, the last option here is the correct option. Um, and as we see, many people underestimate that. Um, there's quite a fair share who think it's only one to 3%. Um, many of you thought it might be five to 10%. So this is probably one of the most underestimated um, parts of, of uh, the carbon footprint of Switzerland, um, which is why if you maybe saw online in, in recent days, um, the kind of young climate activists have been quite upset about the fact um, that there has been kind of government support for, for some of the airlines, um, despite the fact that there is kind of this, this very strong contribution to um, CO2 emissions. And then the last question um, about the colorful stripes that you also see on the bottom of this screen here. And um, Again, of course, different uh, options could be correct here. It is certainly a good question, and it is also on the Max Flyer. Um, but the correct answer is the last one here. Um, it actually symbolizes the rise of temperatures uh, in Switzerland since 1864. So every stripe that you see here is one year, starting in 1864 and ending, I think, in 2018 or 19. Um, and what you also see is that, in fact, um, it's been, um, there's been a lot of kind of uh, years where the temperature was above the average um, in the last uh, part um, of this period. And that's one of the reasons why we've designed this program to make sure it's not going to get more into dark red mode um, in the future. And indeed, uh, the, the large majority of you um, has um, understood this. Yes, so that brings us to the winners. Um, so Alex from our team has kind of put all the people who have responded to the quiz um, into um, a kind of box and kind of pulled out uh, the three lucky winners. And the lucky winners are David Lopetrone, Gerd Greckhaus, and David Steiner. So congratulations to our three winners. Um, we will get in touch with you by email um, so that you can get your vouchers um, and enjoy vegetarian, low carbon food at Tibbets. Last but not least, before we end um, the session today, um, we also wanted to make you aware of a new uh, video that we've just um, published um, on Max. Um, so you will find that on YouTube. Mela, maybe you can copy the URL into the chat. Um, that's a two minute video or 158 as you can see down there um, that really kind of gives a very brief summary of the things we've discussed now um, in this webinar today. Um, Feel free to share it with um, your friends, your colleagues, um, to spread the word um, about this program. Um, and it will also it also includes a couple of voices from people from alumni, from uh, people who are already working in this space, um, to to why they think this is an important program, and why they would encourage you to apply as well. Hello, you want to do that part? Sure. So with this, we would like to thank you for your attention. And of course, we look forward to receive your application for the MAC certificate. And please help us spread the word about this new master certificate, since this is a very new um, program. It's not that well known yet. So if you know colleagues or friends um, who might be interested, please tell them that this um, offer exists. And yeah, we hope to have a, a cool class together. Um, in September and look forward to, to studying managing climate solutions with you.
And of course, if you have any further questions in the meantime, please just get in touch with us by sending an email to max at unisg.ch or just consult our um, webpage. And yeah, with this, thanks a lot for your attention and have a good evening. Thank you also on my end. Um, thank you, Mela, also um, for uh, all your work in preparing this and um, for answering uh, all the questions that we uh, get. Um, as she said, uh, we're really looking forward to, to welcoming you in this program and first of all to receive your application, of course. Um, it is a big challenge. Um, climate change is something that really needs to be addressed. It's also a great opportunity to uh, make a positive contribution, um, but also to kind of learn something that's really relevant um, for your careers. Um, so we hope to see your uh, applications in, um, in good numbers. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to get in touch again. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a nice evening. Take care. Stay safe. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>